Hey guys, this is Gaspew's Tape, and today you join me for another episode of Subscriber Designs, and I hope you, uh, hope you like the silly little intro thing. Basically what that was is, I got sent, um, this, this Mav from, uh, The Martian, which came, comes to me from, uh, Hundiaga. Hundiaga? Hundiaga? Something like that. Anyway, um, and yeah, it's the Mav from The Martian, and if you don't know, spoiler alert, Mark Watney, the main guy, gets taken out by a windstorm on the way to the Mav, and then they just totally bail on him. Although, actually, they do look for him. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so that's that's what this is, and uh, we are on my movie set, of course, with the, uh, yeah, let's take a look at this, because this is some interesting inventions. We've got my debris cannon, um, and of course, the, uh, the base set. <laughs> I know I've just shattered the illusion, but it's 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 fun. Anyway, yeah, so that was that little debris cannon. It's just a bunch of vector engines and a bunch of shit on it. Anyway, but yeah, let's take a look at this vehicle. This is really cool. It's quite a nice rendition of the Mav. It's actually kind of how I imagined it from the books. Uh, well, from the book. Um, and you should definitely read the book. If you've seen the film, pretty good film. Not the best, but uh, the book was really fun, actually. Really detailed. Anyway. So yeah, let's take a look at this top to bottom. So on the bottom we have the landing stage, three powerful engines. Um, these are of course for landing it on the surface so that uh, the upper bit can take off again. Um, and this would land probably using all of the fuel from the rocket, but then it actually has a little drill in here, much like the real system which would make uh, fuel from... I think just the CO2 and water in the atmosphere? Something like that? Although is there water? No. Well, it gets water from somewhere, probably a drill. Um, and we have that in uh, KSP with the ore drill. So we can deploy that and uh, start mining. And it does come with solar panels and, and radiators so that this could actually... This could actually... This is a functional spacecraft. It's really cool. Um, so if I deploy all of this, there probably is an action group, but I rarely check action groups. Uh, I just press a lot of buttons until things explode. But anyway, yeah, so you can imagine this could now mine a bunch of fuel... Fill up the rocket, everything will be good. It does have an ISRU right in here, in this little cockpit, so we could start the LFO and it would start making it. Um, it has this little cockpit down here, so you can actually jump in from the bottom, which is pretty nice, and then transfer up to the top. Um, and yeah, that's it. Uh, I've obviously already landed it, so I won't show you landing it, but you could imagine how that would be. It would be coming down sort of vertically on three engines, and then land perfectly. Um, but yeah, so let's shut down these engines and launch it into the air to see what it's like with its second stage. It's actually a three-stage vehicle. It has the uh, landing stage, the second kind of booster stage for taking off, and actually a third stage for getting into orbit, if I can actually get into orbit. So, we've assumed Mark Watney is dead. We're going to fire up the engines and take off. So it leaves that on the surface, much like the Apollo missions actually would leave something on the surface, leave their landing stage on the surface. Um, and yeah, this is comprised of uh, these uh, little flea solid rocket motors and a bunch of these um, uh, Terrier liquid fuel engines for a little bit of efficiency. The uh, uh, the uh, solid rocket boosters obviously provide all the thrust, um, whereas the, these engines provide all of the uh, efficiency. And they actually burn out at the exact same time, which is a really nice little detail, actually. Um, it's Duna, so I want to get going sideways pretty quickly, um, because you want to get as much velocity as possible uh, and not get too much altitude. I don't know what my altitude is, though. What is my apoapsis? Ooh, a bit low. I may have gone a little bit to the side. Hopefully I'll make it to orbit in this, but uh, if not, I guess we can do a Mark Watney Iron Man thing. <laughs> that was so stupid. Um, it was just staged there. You can see the beautiful first stage falling away. Created out of a bit of a fairing. Nice way to do it. Um, but yeah, it was so stupid in the movie. <laughs> when uh, he couldn't quite make it to the Ares vehicle, he cuts a hole in his suit and like, Iron Man's. It's like, that would have like no Delta V and no control, you fucking idiot. Um, whereas in the book, I think they actually just go and grab him, they figure it out somehow. Um, and yeah, I, I'm, I'm shitting on the movie, but I have to say, I really did like the book. I don't want to be one of those people who's like, you know, the books are so much better than the movies, but in a lot of cases, I mean, I have to say, I'm reading the James Bonds right now, bit of a diversion from the episode, but the James Bonds, the books are like really, I don't know, they're cool, although I have to say James Bond in the books does drink a lot. I am surprised that he's still alive and doesn't have cancer. <laughs> Anyway, let's just get to orbit and stop wondering about James. But like, okay, when James Bond goes to dinner, he orders a bunch of food and he's like, I'll have like a whole bottle of champagne, some shot. One day I'm here at a half a bottle of champ uh, ch Chardonnay for lunch. Fucking madman. <laughs> anyway, I don't know why I'm talking about James Bond. I have books on the mind. Um, James, uh, um, not James Bond. Um, 
the writer of The Martian, the author, the uh, Andy Weir. He's actually come out with a new book, Artemis, which I've actually bought and have been meaning to read, but have been currently reading up on um, James Bond being an alcoholic. Uh, seriously, how is he alive? He'll just, like, order a whole bottle of champagne and then drink a shit ton of brandy and then take a bunch of Benzedrine. It's crazy, but they're good books. Um, although, the book I'm reading right now, Moonraker, is about a crazy billionaire um, who creates a rocket and uh, is, uh, for, like, allegedly defending the country, but then plans to nuke London. It's like, oh, God, that's Elon Musk's plan, isn't it? <laughs> oh, bit of a sidetrack there, but I'm a sidetracky person. Um, and, I mean... Oh, there was the Falcon Heavy launch on Tuesday. That was pretty great. Anyway, I've, I've just been talking over this because, you know, it was launching. There's not much to do. I mean, we did a launch. But yeah, almost got to orbit. Now, I guess I could use the RCS here to push myself on into orbit. Do you reckon I'll make it? Guess we'll find out. So maybe I was supposed to use the bottom stage, the landing stage of this, also for taking off. That would make sense, and I bet I would have made it to orbit, actually. Um, but maybe we'll make it orbit on the RCS. Maybe they'll all die. I mean, Mark Watney's still down there. Although it's a movie set, so... <laughs> a movie set. I'm taking this to Sundance. I'm quite proud of my little opening 30-second cinematic. <laughs> I joke, but I am actually kind of proud of it. <laughs> anyway, actually, fucking hell. We made it to orbit almost. Oh, it's very slightly decaying, but uh, near enough. Near enough, you know? It's good shit. Anyway, so yeah, that's that in orbit. I really like that. The map was really cool. Gave me an opportunity to do something fun, so thank you to uh, Handiaga for that. I hope my, uh, my my divergence onto talking about James Bond wasn't too weird, and uh, let's move on to the next craft. So, the next craft that comes to me today is the Ares Mark II, and is a space destroyer. And it comes to me, actually, well, it says not to mention uh, the guy's name, so I won't. Uh, maybe that meant second name or first name. Anyway, basically, you know who you are, but this comes to me from Anonymous. Um, and it's a space destroyer, and I thought I'd bring it to Duna, because why not? And also because it's called Ares, like the uh, spacecraft in um, The Martian, although if this turned up to save Mark Watney, he might be a little bit scared. Anyway, this is a really cool-looking spacecraft. It is obviously a destroyer. It has a bunch of these kind of standard I-beam-looking missiles, which do look pretty formidable. Um, it's, wow, it's very lit up red. Beautiful. It has a lot of cool stuff on it. It also actually has some aesthetic coil guns. Uh, these are, I guess, basically rail guns, and they're, they're built really nicely using these seismometers to look like um, look like the coils, and it, they look really cool, but obviously they don't do anything. Um, but yeah, I really like how the spacecraft looks. It's very maneuverable. It is has a surprisingly high, I think these are the right energy, yeah, surprisingly high delta V in thrust to weight ratio. You can see here, lots of vectors, tons of fuel. We could probably just escape Duna like that. Yeah, let's see where we can go. See if we can go and find Elon Musk's Tesla. Ah, oh, that SpaceX launch was so cool. Look, fucking hell, fucking heavy when the, both the rockets landed at the same time. That was mad. <laughs> if you haven't seen it already, somehow, go watch it. Um, after this. <laughs> anyway, it looks like we could go straight from Duna to Eve pretty easily. Maybe I can actually go to Eve. Get an encounter? No? Yeah? No? Alright, well anyway, you can see it has a ton of Delta V, but the main thing, of course, is not the engines, it is the weapons. So it has a bunch of these missiles, um, I don't think they're staged correctly, but I can just do that really quickly, but let's talk through them first. So it has, the first missile you'll really see are these small ones with the I-beams, and they are powered by solid rocket boosters, and it appears, if I'm seeing this correctly, it also appears to have a liquid fuel and oxidizer engine on the bottom of it for control, which is pretty good. So they're not quite dumb fire missiles. Um, I think they might even have a probe on them. Anyway, uh, there's also some slightly bigger missiles, these things, which also are powered by solid rocket boosters and liquid fuel and oxidizer engines, and actually have a grabber on them. So I guess they could like grab a ship out of the out of the sky, which out of the air, which is pretty cool. Um, and then some kind of ominous tube. I don't really. It was a crew hatch. Oh, that's cool. Um, and then it appears actually to also have some drop pods right here. Um, these separate... Uh, can I separate these? So if I were to do... Ooh, how does this work? So I think if I decouple this and then do this... Does this control? Yeah, it does. Okay. Um, so then fire up the engine retrograde. I could... Let's see if this will work. Just like this. Yeah, so it flies off back here. Um, and then once it's deorbited, shit. Oh, I guess it's actually probably not going to go all the way retrograde because uh, 
yeah, we're sort of escaping the system. But you can imagine it could do that. It probably actually does have enough Delta V. Um, might as well... Ch hmm, maybe it could. Let's find out. Let's find out if it can actually just stop itself from escaping the system. If it has more Delta V than the spaceship itself. I think it does. That's quite impressive. All right. Well, now I'm interested. This looks to me like an escape pod or maybe like a emergency messaging system because it has a storage container unit so you could actually put science in it. Um, so yeah, now we've uh, deorbited, we've shut off the engine and decoupled this. And now we have a little pod. We could put science in it or whatever. Um, probably not a Kerbal, but it has a heat shield and a parachute and could land safely on Duna, which is a really cool little feature, a little escape pod. This uh, Space Destroyer is rife with cool features like this, so let's go back to it and look at a few more. Um, so escape pods, very cool. Uh, we'll take a look at the missiles working. I don't have anything else to shoot with it, but if you want to see a big space battle, there's last episode, which also started with kind of a cinematic, but not quite as, not, not as high quality as the one today, I must say. <laughs> anyway. So yeah, let's get uh, these big missiles working. Um, where are their decouplers? Here. So I guess what we'd do, right, is arm these so they can grab the enemy ship and pull it back to hell. Uh, and I guess there's also some liquid fuel noxizer engines. Let's get all of this working. Um, there's a lot of engines on here. It's not super well staged, but I think it's a cool enough vehicle that I'll forgive it. Anyway, so yeah. Um, hmm. All of these engines are... Oh, now shut down. It does have action groups, but I don't think for the missiles. I'll quick save here, just in case I fuck this up. And then what we could do is... Fire those missiles! And they <laughs> bounced off each other a bit. But now that... Yeah, 90 degree missiles! <laughs> what the hell's happening here? Now that it's on... Yeah, but you could imagine I could actually control these and send them to wherever. And then grab the enemy ship and do some damage. Pretty nice. And then, of course, they also have the... Uh, this ship also has the standard... I B missiles. Uh, one of these. Uh, okay. Um, oh fucking hell! <laughs> they are the missile flew past almost bloody hitters. Anyway, um, so yes, now I've set up the missiles after a little bit of searching through the staging, and I'm going to quick save, and we could fire them off. There they go. Look at them—a cluster of beauty. Not super accurate, and they hit each other. You're probably supposed to fire them one at a time. Actually, looks like they ripped it themselves apart. Maybe that's you know they're like a cluster missile, but. <laughs> Not perfect, but they're still really nice looking missiles. And that's all the weaponry. Pretty cool. I do like these kind of things. And there's also another nice feature on this, which is it has retrograde engines for just stopping in battle and then firing your missiles and then buzzing out again. Pretty cool. And there are a few other cool things. There's some escape pods down here, it looks like. Um, can I get a Kerbal in here? There we go. So we could get Leary Kerman. We could put him in the escape pod. And we could probably undock this. Decouple node. Oh, fucking hell. Okay. So then we could... <laughs> winkle our way out of here. Fire up our engines. Okay. Or whomever. Can I please just fire them up? There we go. And I think it's burned most of its fuel using the main engines. Um, but still, I could go and escape. And then go back to Duna or whatever. So, uh, yeah, lots of cool stuff in this. It has a little hanger in the bottom. I really like that. And it also has this little grabber. Which I think I could just use to grab... Oh, it's a space tug, so what I could do is go and fetch it. I'm not going to do that, but uh, yeah, there's just loads of cool stuff in this. There's just tons of features, you know? <laughs> there's escape pods and little space tugs and missiles and retrograde engines. It's very... It's, you know, it's just nicely built, you know? You know what? I am going to go and grab this with this little grabber. You don't get away from me that easy, motherfucker. <laughs> there we go. And let's go! All right. Okay, it's actually gone quite fast, but we'll we'll catch it in no time with our little space grabber. I'm going to hit it really hard and hopefully grab it. <laughs> Probably at 30 meters per second it won't actually grab it, but whatever. Yeah, I, lo I love getting ships with just tons of features, and that one's a really nice one, you know? It just, the red lights make it look cool, it has escape pods, little message pods, missiles. Oh, got him! Nailed him at least, he'll be scared. <laughs> Yeah, you're worried now, motherfucker. But yeah. Anyway, that is the ship, the Ares Mark the Two, and it's just yeah, it's really nice. So thank you very much to Anonymous for sending it to me. I uh, really like looking at this, and uh, yeah. Anyway, let's move on to the last thing of today. So the final craft we're looking at today comes to me from Kronos Aerospace, and this is the Kronos Antonov AN225 Maria. Um, or however you pronounce that word. <laughs> but yes, it is, of course, um, a rather nice replica of the uh, Antonov AN225, uh, AN 
Um, yeah, AN and 225. And it's actually one of the most detailed looking planes I've ever received. And because of that, it is 957 parts. But hey, it does look rather beautiful. It is humongous. It has six engines, but there are actually 12 engines because, uh, well, there's 12 engines just kind of clipped into each other. Um, and just massive wheels at the bottom with this whole custom wheel base, a whole custom underbelly made of fairings, which I kind of want to decouple. And then just loads of these fuel tanks all clipped together to make a massive plane. And it comes in a, with only like 3,000 units of fuel. Um, the wings, just tons of wing surfaces to make kind of a perfect angle and I guess make it fly right as well. And it's just so detailed, and thank you so much, uh, Chronos Aerospace, for sending this to me. I really love how it looks, and I do want to fly it a bit. I might move into post-commentary at some point, because the lag, it's its a little bit. It's, it's, there's some. It's you know, not noticeable. You know, it's basically 60F. You know, it's basically 144 FPS right now, you know? It's its, it's Twitch gaming. <laughs> no, uh, it's its a little, a little laggy. But I have to say, I am surprised that this works at all. When I first started playing KSP, you definitely couldn't have had a thousand part aircraft flying around. Um, that's, that would be quite a task. Uh, <laughs> but clearly it's gotten better. I think once I even had a 4,000 part spacecraft, my ring around Gilly, which was actually a square, which someone actually called a clickbait title, but you know, whatever. I mean, I only built a spacecraft that went all the way around Gilly, you know? I mean, I'm a god among men. <laughs> One day I'm gonna get up to heaven and, and, and you know, and, and well, hell, um, and God's gonna be like, yo, you can't keep using my name, man, you can't keep saying I am God like that, you know, you're ruining this for me. <laughs> anyway, enough talking about how, uh, how I go to hell, and uh, more about how this aircraft lumbers into the air at about 100 meters per second, taking off rather gently, actually probably not too bad if it was at real speed, but it does take off and it is just beautiful. I reckon you probably could have put more fuel in this, like this will fly for not very long, I guess, kind of what, um, like f uh, 500 seconds? Is that? Yeah, surely 3000 divided by, well, divided by 6 is about 500, so uh, yeah, not the longest flight you'll ever get. Um, but you know, it's 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 pretty nice. It's pretty nice, you know. Um, but I'm gonna try and fly it around a bit. I want to buzz the uh, space center. Um, I probably need a little more altitude than half a, than 500 meters to start turning this aircraft. So we're gonna carry on. Um, it gains speed pretty well. You can go f pretty steep in this thing, and it does all right actually. I have to say, I'm very impressed with this. If I if it isn't clear, I fucking love this. I just wish it was a few less parts. I guess you could part weld some of this, actually. Um, but this is totally stock, which is mad. You know, this take this must have taken time. <laughs> anyway. Um, oh, I've just noticed this little beam at the front of these kind of... The center wing's much thicker. I think it's like a dual wing. Oh, it's like a bi biplane up in here. And then a bunch of little pieces here. What are, what are these? Oh, they're control surfaces. Interesting. Um... And actually in here somewhere, there's almost like a corridor. I think it might just be accidental, but you could get a Kerbal in here. You could totally put some seats in there. I'm glad you didn't, because parts. Oh, you have access to the whole goddamn plane from in this little corridor bit. I wonder if you get out into there. Probably not. I think the cockpit's like way more forward. But still, that's cool. Anyway, let's try and turn this around. Buzz the VAB. Try not to crash. Probably will crash. It's quite a big plane. But uh, still, it's rather cool. Yeah. All right. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> uh, I have to say, I think this might look cool with just like 12 engines instead of the six kind of doubled up ones, but it does obviously look more realistic with just the six um, doubled up. Uh, and they are actually not just totally clipped. These ones are a bit in front of these to create a nice effect. You know what? We should put this in Fighter Jet Showdown. <laughs> no, that'd be the worst. That'd be pretty laggy, and I doubt it would last that long. I mean, it can only fly for about five minutes, but, uh, you know. If I throttle down, it could fly for longer. But still, like, uh, you could totally chuck more fuel in this. I mean, it, it weighs loads anyway. What? 600. You could put a little more fuel. But anyway, I mean, <laughs> the fact that it flies at all, I'm not, I'm not going to question this too much, you know. <laughs> anyway. Alright, so I'm going to pull it around, do a sick little barrel roll past the, the, the tower, loop around, fly through the bridge, land it on top of the VAB, <laughs> all that stuff, you know, it'll be fine. Um, I, haven't had a v I haven't had a VTOL in the last two episodes, I've replaced it with little cinematics, I guess. Obligatory cinematic. 
Although, well, the the cinematic at the start of the last episode was just kind of we were looking inside and then the ship got attacked and then we had a battle. This episode, it was kind of like uh, I don't know. I, yeah, that was fun. Uh, <laughs> had to create a debris cannon. That was an interesting task. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's no longer subscriber designs. It's subscriber designs with a bunch of tapes built bullshit to make little scenes. Uh, I don't know, it was fun. It looked a little bit like a movie set down there. I don't know if you caught it, but there was like the set of the thing. I, I, I really like how that looked. It was like, oh, it was almost like we'd faked some kind of landing when I was looking over at it. Uh, when there was like the two sets, I was like, yeah, we did some fake space. <laughs> anyway. Okay, let's... Ooh, it's turning a bit too much. Can I yaw? Yo! Oh, you can. This does look beautiful from behind. The wings are slightly tilted down as well, which is just so nice. Ah, oh, I just probably stopped gushing over this plane. <laughs> it's just so beautiful. I want to clip off a bit of wing and see what happens. Actually, I know what will happen. The game will crash. Um, I think I've turned off the cheats. You have to turn on cheats just to load it in. Otherwise, one of the wings fall. One of the engines falls off, and the wings explode. Uh, <laughs> So it's, 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 it, it only just works. Still, testament to KSP's improvements that it works at all. I have to say, someone's been doing a lot of work. Um, although it does use like multiple cores these days, so that's pretty good. It's mostly a CPU intensive game. Oh, this isn't throttled up to max. Okay, we might break the sound barrier. Okay, we're going to just fly right past the VAB. It's going to be great. I'm just going to miss it, you know? Pull up at the last second. <laughs> although seconds with this plane last like five seconds. Yeah, look at that. Look at the time not moving. I explained all of that in one second in game. Uh, Alright. Let's buzz him. I want to crash it a bit. Let's just crash it a bit. Let's just take off a bit. <laughs> okay. I think we're good. Kind of want to see this from the cockpit. Jesus Christ, Peter. You're mad, man. <laughs> Alright, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Good? Yeah, we're good. We are not good! Oh, that was pretty fucking close. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, this plane is fun. Man, if there was no lag, this would be mental. <laughs> I'm going to try and do a loopy loop. A loopy loop? Not a loop T loop. A loopy loop. We're going to do a little loopy loop. Uh, <laughs> so I'm, I'm sticking with it. And uh, yeah, all right. Pull up. Oh, that is... Damn. It just looks so good. Hey, hey, Tape, do you think it looks good you haven't mentioned? Can it do a loop-de-loop? -loop? I'm sure there's a... I'm sure there's a, a vertical loop. That would be the more technical name. <laughs> we need you to pull a loop-de-loop, -loop, Captain. Not that you'd call a pilot Captain, but whatever. In my Air Force, he would. Alright. I wouldn't want to be a Captain. I'd want to be a Commodore. Um, do they still have the rank of Commodore in the Navy? I actually don't know. I feel like I have heard it. But I don't think it's a natural rank you get. I think it's kind of something you just sort of are. Like, an admiral's kind of a commodore. I don't know. Because, like, if I were to join the military, I would want to be a commodore. Like, straight away, you know. Just, just don't make me a private or a, or a, or a second lieutenant, you know. Because I have a degree, I could probably become an officer straight away. Um, and, uh, no, just make me a commodore straight away. Give me two ships. I think that's the requirement to be a commodore, to be in command of at least two ships. From what I know, from Car Pirates of the Caribbean. Those are some good films. Well, it was a good film and then a bunch of shit sequels. I enjoyed the first two sequels, and the second one was sort of okay, but spent way too much time on dry land. Um, the reason the first Pirates of the Caribbean film worked was because Jack Sparrow was not the main character. He was kind of the side character, the kind of chaotic, neutral, evil sort of thing. Yeah, chaotic, neutral, I think would be his D&D &D alignment. <laughs> anyway, um... Uh, but yeah, he was kind of chaotic and weird, and it was more about Will and the woman. Um, what was her name? Elizabeth. <laughs> you fucking chauvinist piece of shit, Peter. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, Jesus. I think we're going to hit the ground pretty hard. Come on. Yeah, anyway, but Jack Sparrow should be a side character who does fun shit, not the main character. That's what ruined the uh, films. Anyway, yeah, you've had my, my, uh, my thoughts on a lot of media today. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. Ooh, that's going to be rough. It's going to be rough on my computer. <laughs> anyway, I imagine this is just going to crash the game. I'll leave it a little bit. We'll see it explode. Um, but yeah, anyway, that is pretty much the end of the episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. 
Keep sending me stuff. Um, I'm thinking Final Jet Showdown will start... What's the date today? 8th of February, and I think this is actually going up today because I've been a bit behind with videos. Sorry about that. Um, I have been quite busy trying to make cars drive themselves. Um, That's my dissertation. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, so Final Jet Showdown, I think it's not going to start until we've got Kerbal Rising going because that's taking some time. So... Maybe two or three weeks until the next season of Final Jet Showdown. I also like to leave a little bit of a break, just because, you know, you don't want to see the same shit all the time. I'm going to be doing some different things in the next few weeks. Like I say, I'm crazy busy with all the things I'm doing right now. Well, mostly just the one thing, which is my dissertation. I'm coming to the end of my degree, so I'm pretty busy. But uh, I'm going to, you know, keep making videos as much as possible. But sometimes it's going to be three videos in a week instead of four. Um, very rarely five. That kind of thing. So, yeah. But keep sending me stuff you know, prepare for the next season of Final Jet Showdown. But if you really have a hankering to build some craft that will be in a series that will do battle, then there's always building spaceships for Kerbal Wars, me and Pe uh, Kerbal Rising. Me and Penguin have a, uh, have a, uh, <laughs> look, it's ripping itself apart. Me and Penguin both have videos about submitting craft for that, so yeah. But anyway, yeah, this was a bit of a ramble so that we could see the plane explode. And also, because, you know, gotta let you know what's going on with all the stuff. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I certainly have. And uh, yeah, this has been KSP with Tape. I will see you next time.